Hey, Lemons. I don't know if that's going to stick, but uh, I just thought maybe I would call the folks who watched videos made by Lemon Productions Lemons. Doesn't really work if you really think about it too long, so don't think about it too long. This video is in response to a comment from Crazy Robot Lady, and I love to try and answer questions if I can with another video, just because it helps me with something to do <laughs> for videos, and also uh, answers your questions. So Crazy Robot Lady asks, this is great stuff. I'm attempting to record a multi-track dramatized audio work using just Farago and GarageBand. I also have my Claret 2 Pre USB set as my audio output device. The problem is I end up with either only my voice or only my background music track, even though I have set up two audio tracks, one for my voice and the other for music. I also make sure to select my line-in or microphone on both tracks. Any idea what I'm doing wrong here? Do I need audio hijack in addition to Farago and GarageBand to combine these two tracks into one file? Sorry for my awful spelling. Actually, your spelling's been great. And Braille is my first written, written language, so any help would be appreciated. So I'm guessing there's some sort of visual impairments that is going on, and so hopefully what I show on the screen and, um, and also what I say with my voice will help you out, but also anybody else who has watches this and has questions or comments or anything that they feel like I didn't do a great job of explaining maybe, feel free to throw that in the comments below. Now on to the video. Okay, so you're right in that GarageBand does not, if I go to System Preferences for GarageBand, I don't really have a way to choose more than one input device. So I can have my, in my case, the Scarlett ATI-8, or in your case, the Pre USB 2 Pre, but those devices do not allow for very easily without routing cables and stuff for software on your Mac to then also be included. So, which is why you're running into the issue of having, uh, say, the sound bed maybe once, but not your voice or just your voice and not the sound bed. And so that's kind of a limitation of GarageBand and uh, and Logic Pro for that matter on the Mac. So you you had mentioned Audio Hijack. Um, Rogue Amoeba's Loopback also is something that you could look into. Soundflower is what it's kind of based on before, but this is a much nicer interface. And it kind of does what you'd ask or what you're after, where you could create a, a, a loop um, device on your Mac that would take your mic and say Frago and loop it all together into one track, one channel that could get thrown into GarageBand. That's kind of what I have here in my input devices. These are other loopback devices that I could choose. And so those could actually have my mic and Farago all at once. But that still doesn't get you the them on separate tracks, which is kind of probably what you're after because that way you can, if you talk too loud or quietly over top of some sound effects, then you can keep them on two separate tracks. You can adjust the volume of the sound effects maybe after the fact or add some stereo effects or add some EQing or whatever to your voice and also to the uh, sound bed. So that's where you're on the right path. Um, that's where Audio Hijack would come in really handy. So in Audio Hijack, just to show you how this might possibly work is um, I'm going to drag an input device in here. That's going to be my Scarlett USB Pre, or USB. <laughs> Yours is the USB Pre 2. In my case, I want just channel 1 because that's what where my mic is going into. And um, then I'm going to also maybe add a meter so I can see how loud I am. And uh, let's send that into a recorder. So just for argument's sake here, I'm going to, because I want to start as high quality possible as possible audio, and I have lots of hard drive space, I'm going to choose AFF. If you had le or less hard drive space, um, or maybe it's just like a draft, you're not really worried about the overall audio quality, you could choose MP3, higher quality MP3 is what I'd go with, um, or AAC. But uh, if you've got the space and uh, want to just start with really good quality audio to begin with, use uncompressed AIFF. You can change the file name to possibly something a little more helpful. You might want date and time, but then also uh, my mic recording, let's say. And then I'm also going to add an application. So in this case, I'm going to look for Farago. And just for same reason here, I might want to add a meter. And then also going to capture a recorder, or throw in a recorder. And again, I'm going to choose uh, AIFF, uncompressed, and let's call this Farago recording so that those two are separate. So now what I've got is obviously my microphone's going to come in on here, Farago's going to come in here. They're both going to get recorded in stereo. Uh, not as important for my microphone because that's mono, but uh, this the uh, Farago app could be sending stereo audio out of it. 
Um, and so I'm going to switch over to Farago. And so I've got just some sound beds from um, music recordings or podcast recordings that I do. And I'm going to play back my audio. Now, for me, I'm going to choose Telestream Audio Capture just because for the screen flow recording that I'm doing, I need to be able to hear it and you need to be able to hear it. So if I choose something. Wow, Carpe freaking Diem, dude. It's getting recorded. Um Audio Hijack will override that and or will take care of making sure it's grabbing the app sound effects properly because you're not going to be worried about screen recordings and things like that. So just to test this out right now, I'm going to hit record here so I can see already my voice is going through into the recorder. It's getting levels and things like that. Farago itself isn't sending anything yet, but if I move over and uh, let's say play, you can see that it's getting recorded. Just to make this a little easier, I'm going to switch to their sample set and have just a loop playing. So you can see there's music coming through and my voice coming through. Let's say I wanted to record, I'm just going to stop this. Let's say I wanted to record my voice, like a, you, know, you, you mentioned dramatic reading. Um, you've got a script maybe um, and you want to be able to control the volume and, and stuff as you're doing it. That's where you could add a volume meter, let's say, on... Farago, just to be able to dial it down while you're recording. So you can see the peak meter goes down. The recording actually might, what you're hearing right now when you watch this video, it might actually have the volume coming through for Farago either. Again, that's because I'm of the screen flow recording, screencast recording software that I'm using in order to be able to do it properly. I could change some things around to route that audio better so that I could hear it right now and then later. But just to make it simple, keep it simple, um, I'm not going to worry about that. So, but I could adjust the volume of the recording here if I wanted to now. And same thing, I could do that with my voice here if I wanted to just have control right here rather than having to run to the USB pre device or switch over to Frago, let's say. So that'll give me, give me two files. If I click on recordings here, I can go to, it's just under new blank session because I didn't name it properly. <laughs> uh, but my, my mic recording and Frago recording. Wow, Carpe freaking deal. In two separate files. So those two can be then imported into GarageBand and then I can edit it from there. One thing I'll just show you before we go do that is you might want to do a, another recorder that captures both of these channels. Just, and again, whether you, I would do it as a MP3 backup, just saying, calling this, oops, backup recording. So you can see that both tracks are being fed into this recorder. So now if I do another recording uh, and hit start, so my voice is coming through, Farago is also coming through, I'll put a slow jam on. They're getting recorded at each level on their own track, but then also combined into one MP3 file here. And that is just kind of a handy way to have a backup of everything you did. If, if you end up accidentally deleting or editing these audio files uh, to the point that they're not usable anymore for some reason, maybe you don't make a backup of those, you do have a stereo recording in case you want to uh, rescue anything from that. So I'm going to go back to my recording. So there you can see now I have got a backup recording in MP3 format and then my two recordings of that second session. But using the first session there, I'm going to select both of them. Now I've got actions for edit in GarageBand. I'm gonna actually go with Reveal and Finder, or in Logic, sorry. Reveal and Finder, so there's my audio files. I'm gonna flip over to GarageBand, flip back to Finder, and drag these two files in. So now you can see I've got my recording here, or sorry, my mic is down here on the bottom, and the Farago recording is up top as you can see it's named that so if i play back so i can see already my voice is going through into the recorder it's getting levels and things like that and uh let's say play wow carpe freaking diem dude that and have just a little play so you can see dial it down while you're recording. so now this gives you the ability inside GarageBand to if you command t to split that edit and maybe delete some of this 
if I didn't like the, you can see that it's getting recorded. That part that I did, I could do Command T again, delete that, drag these two over. that kind of thing and do all sorts of editing it's getting editing inside GarageBand adding effects compressor effects etc so that's how you would use audio hijack to record alongside Farago and I think you're right uh, robot what was it <laughs> sorry your name crazy robot lady uh, that probably audio hijack would come in really handy for what you're doing uh, if you're trying to do that kind of like record sound effects and a voice at the same time uh, without having to worry about uh, trying to remember where you track, which track you recorded them on and that kind of stuff. So hopefully that answers your question. Hopefully that helps you out. And uh, anybody else that's watching along, feel free to throw any comments or questions in the comments field below. I'd love to answer your questions about Audio Hijack, about podcasting, audio nerdery stuff on the Mac, or even just other non-audio stuff on the Mac for that matter. Um, just throw that in the comments below. If you'd like to hire me, you can do so at the link on the screen here. Uh, for any sort of podcast consulting, I'm available for a hour session or if you need someone to help with your editing your podcast on an ongoing basis, I'm also available for that kind of work as well. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day. Bye.